With FPIs, we often are in the habit of planning for food trials and potential reactions, but we also have to plan for other types of emergencies. So when you're starting out your emergency planning and prep, you need to know what types of disasters are more likely to affect the area you live in. Is it hurricanes? Is it flooding? Um, snowstorms? You also want to determine what resources your family needs to weather the storm. Who, can you, who you can call for help, and when and where to evacuate if you need to. So, for instance, you may be okay for the first 24 hours, um, you know, during a disaster, but you may have in your plan that if, you know, your house is not able to be lived in for, you know, more than 24 hours, or... You know, if you don't have electricity for a full week, where do you need to go? Do you need to go to family, friends? What's the plan? So your next step is going to be creating an emergency kit or kits. And um, as you see in this video, I give you an example of what we have at our house. Um, obviously, you know, you want to keep in mind your kit is individualized to your family and to the members of your family. So any suggestions here are just simply to get you started. First, you're going to write a checklist of the necessary items that you might need. You're going to consider the needs and the ages of each family member. And if you have growing children, especially if your children are very young, you're going to want to reassess this list on an ongoing basis. The needs of a six-month-old, for instance, are very different from the needs of a two-year-old. Next, you want to consider whether or not you need to create more than one kit. So for instance, do you need one for home? Do you need one for the car? One for daycare? And so on and so forth. I usually have one for our house, for the car. I have um, a quick grab-and-go bag. And also, in the past, we've had very small kits at the schools for the girls. And usually in those, I just have enough for them to get through a day, for instance, if they had to have a lockdown or some other kind of event that would happen at the school, since the school would not be able to provide food for them. So those are just some of the things you want to consider when you're going about your planning for your kids. Next, you want to think about these questions as you're um, going about your planning. And these, these are going to kind of direct you into not only what you need in your kit, but kind of to get the conversation going in your family and what you need to do when certain emergencies occur. So first of all, again, you want to go back to what supplies do you need. You want to go back to your kit. And in terms of what supplies you need, you want to think about what do you need for 24 hours versus what do you need for a week. Next, you want to think about where do you go if you have to leave home? You know, do you have a family member that lives close by? Would you have to travel a long distance? Where would you go? You also want to think about what you would do if you needed medical help. Is there a certain hospital that you feel more comfortable going to, if at all possible? Um, maybe their local hospital has your um, child's medical plan in place and you feel more comfortable with your child being around doctors who are familiar with his or her case, if at all possible. So you also want to think about what you would need to do if you were to get medical help. And in addition to that, along the same lines, you want to think about what information you would need to bring to them. Because during an emergency or during a disaster, you might not get a physician who is familiar at all with FPI. So you want to make sure that you have adequate information to just give someone a snapshot idea of what's going on with your child so that they can help them as quickly and efficiently as possible. Next, you want to consider what information you need to include in medical files or on medical alert bracelets. So this is a great time to go through your medical files and kind of update and make sure that you have everything that you would need if an emergency were to occur.
you know, that that way if you needed to go to a doctor or, you know, you needed any kind of medical help that they would be able to be caught up to speed relatively quickly. And again, this goes back to your kit. You want to create a flash drive or external hard drive, some kind of um, data storage that can contain scanned copies of important documents. And these, of course, could relate to financial documents, things like the title to, you know, a vehicle or to your house, um, identification documents, passports, um, driver's licenses, anything like that, and also important medical documents. You know, you're not going to have enough time often to gather together all your important papers, but if you have them scanned and all in one file, then they can be a little bit easier to access later on. Next, and this is very important, you want to connect with your local and national government organizations that would respond to disasters in your area. So if you, if you live in the United States, that would be, um, your national organization would be like FEMA, and your local government likely has some kind of system in place or some kind of department that responds to disasters. And you can usually, you know, call up your local government offices and ask to speak to someone who handles that. And if at all possible, register your family as a family with unique medical needs. Some things to consider when you're um, speaking with these government officials. If your child requires medical equipment and or relies on medical food, you really want to be sure to relay this information and be as specific as possible. Next, you want to be sure to mention any dietary restrictions as they may not be easily accommodated in disaster shelters. You know, these officials might have some suggestions for you about what to include in your kit. They might, um, you know, they might be able to accommodate some food restrictions if they know in advance. I don't really know what the capacity of each individual organization is, but these are discussions that need to happen. And, you know, on their end, they can give you some insights that you might not have, and you can also give them the information they need. Overall, you know, officials and um, volunteers who assist during disasters, they want information that's going to help them help as many people as possible. So the more information that you can provide them to be able to help them do that is going to make both of your lives a lot easier. And finally, you want to make sure that you regularly check your kit every few months. And the things that you're going to be looking at when you do your checks are expiration dates of foods or medications. You want to add or change any documents to reflect any new important information. And you also want to familiarize yourself with items in the kit and really reassess whether or not certain supplies are adequate. You know, have your needs changed in the last few months? You know, maybe your child has some new safe foods now and there's some additional things that you can put in your kit. Or, like we mentioned earlier, you know, perhaps when you first created your kit, your child was six months old and now they're two. And so their needs are a little bit different. So those are the things that you would reassess as you are going through and checking your kit as in addition to the basic expiration dates and other things to look at. So I hope this helps you to get started again. I know I've mentioned this before, but we do have our um, emergency planning worksheet that is available on our website. Um, you can access it on the Global FPIES Day website, which is fpiesday.org, or you can access it on our regular website, which is fpiesfoundation.org. And just like any other resource, if you need help finding it or you would like to request some hard copies, you can always email us, and we are happy to send them to you. So again, thank you for joining us for Global FPIES Day, and... We hope you have a great night. Thanks so much. So tonight, since we're talking about preparing for emergencies 
and um, other disasters, I thought that we would just briefly go over what you might want to include in your kit. These are just suggestions. Um, everybody is going to create a kit that's unique to you know his or her family, and just a mention any. Um, Brand names that you might see on this are purely accidental, and I am not endorsing any companies, nor is the foundation. I am simply demonstrating um, what we happen to have in our kit at home. So, before we move on to any um, discussions about, say, foods or food products, um, you want to talk about communication. So, if there was a disaster in your area you would want to be able to get information so having something like this um, crank powered radio can be really useful it also doubles as a flashlight so making sure you have that another good idea to keep in your emergency kit is a portable charger for your cell phone that would be a great idea also in disasters, sometimes our important documents can be lost, so having scanned copies uploaded on some kind of flash drive or SD card would be really helpful. And, of course, we do have some things you can probably see through the side of the tote there that um, we have a couple decks of playing cards in there for the kids in case they were to get bored. If we had to, you know, be in the basement for a while weathering a storm or, you know, if we were on the go. The tote's heavy, but I can physically lift it, um, and I'm a pretty typical adult, so you want, when you're packing up your tote, you want to think about that. You want to think about how easily you can carry this out of your house. So, like I said, we're going to also talk about um, food products. You want to think of shelf-stable things that have far-out expiration dates so that you only have to check your emergency stash every couple months or so to weed out anything that has expired. So when you're doing food trials with your kids you might want to consider trialing some shelf stable versions of their safe foods if at all possible. In one of the videos that um, I did for the foundation last year for Global Days we talked about canning and that can be a great way to store foods for emergencies if you are unable to find any products to purchase at your own store that are safe for your child with his or her safe foods. You also want to make sure that you have a lot of water. Um, FEMA has specific recommendations based on the size of your household. So, you know, you want to check out FEMA's website if you live in the United States. And in other countries, you know, check out your government's emergency management websites and they will likely have recommendations there as well. We also have a grab bag, which this is just a backpack, but it is actually an insulated cooler backpack. We use it for a lot of hiking trips and things, but this is also a great grab bag for any time you might have to leave your house right away and you you can't carry something that maybe is heavy. So in this bag, this would be more of like um, a 24 to 48 hour type survival kit thing. So that's another thing to consider as well. So just to review in um, any emergency kits, you would need to have, you know, food, any medications that are um, necessary, liquids, especially water. You also want to make sure that you have some basic survival tools. Um, and like I said, you also having a grab bag can be really helpful for those times when maybe you have to evacuate your house on foot and you're not able to carry something that's heavy. So when you're creating these kits, you want to think of something that you can keep in your home. You want to think of something that you can grab and go. And you also want to take a minute and think about maybe making a kit for your car or making a kit to leave at your child's school or daycare for them to use in the event of an emergency. So hopefully this was helpful to you and I hope that all of you can avoid disasters but 
as all of you as FPI's parents know, being prepared is really essential and important. So thank you and have a great evening.